Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where the construction on our pad is nearly complete here. Things are going pretty well, so let's just go ahead and slot some of these grip pads in here, shall we? We'll just... Mm, how do I want to actually do this? Hmm... I'll need to think about that. I didn't consider this issue. <laughs> I mean, I could in theory... Wait, we want it to be snapping on to, to make it actually work, right? Yes. In theory. <laughs> in theory. Okay. So this is definitely going to be interesting. Noted. So, I mean, we could place this, this grip pad over here, for sure. That's the thing we could do. But what about... We may actually have to move these over this way a little bit. We want this to be in local world space. Grab this and move it over like one snap. Something along the lines of that. I mean, we're going to have to move basically the whole thing, right? But, I mean, we could have it just be like this. And then we could move it back. That's a theoretical possibility. Yeah, let's see how this works. Um, it works okay, I guess. We can place this one here. And yeah, we're going to have to make a few adjustments to the positioning. But overall, that's, I think, reasonably fine. One thing we could do, I think there's an option in the cheat menu that would make this work a lot, a lot more like it works in the, uh, make it work a lot more like it works in the VAB. We could do something like, ooh, that's not what I wanted. Something like this, and then we'd need to have this, like, out here. Yeah. Actually, this is working fine, I think. We'll have to tweak these locations a little bit, but, uh, I think overall, you get the idea, right? on building this pad. I think what we're actually going to do is I think that we are going to turn off snapping here and we'll just work on this little area here for a moment. This will actually have to be lowered down like this as well. And I think I'll mostly place these pads off camera. However, I kind of need to record this episode right now, right? So... That's a thing that needs to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this good for now. And like I said, I'm going to place these pads on here off camera. So we are going to head on back at this point. Let me go ahead and make a quick save here just in case. And we will head back to the space center. Because we need to send another delivery, right? And what do we want to send? Well, not that whole cargo ship. That's for, oh, this bug. Right, we'll hop into the astronaut complex and come back out, hopefully. Okay, no, we'll just hop into the VAB. That's fine. You know what, though? We actually shouldn't. What we should actually do is we should, we should really hop into the... Oh, now it's working. Okay, into the mission control. And just check to see if there are any good contracts here. There are not. Well, science data from space around the moon, that's something we can do super easily and get a little bit of cash. Let's go ahead and do that. And we are then going to, I mean, we could just hop over to the space station around the moon, the mining station there, and we can transmit back some science. That'll be no problem. Excellent. So I'll just time warp while we are transmitting this. Go up to 10x. Uh, we do not actually need to stop time warp. Thank you. Okay, there we go. 497 science added. That is a heaping helping of science. Let's head on back to the space center and we can probably spend that. Now we do need to send up our arm, right? That is something that we need to send up. Okay, we'll hop into the R&D here, even though it is very black at the KSC right now. The lighting is, for some reason, not wanting to load today, it would seem. Nuclear propulsion is not a terrible thing to grab right now, and I will definitely do that. Okay, now we're going to hop into the VAB here. 
We are probably going to need another engineer up there. That is a thing that I'm definitely thinking about. And we are going to open up the landing proofer here temporarily. The landing platform proofer here. Because what we really want to know is what parts do we need for the arm. Now, this is not necessarily the way that I want to build the arm. I want to... Yeah, that's pretty minor there. Uh, yeah, it's it's okay. It'll do. So, we're going to grab all of this off of there. Excellent. And then we're going to ditch everything here. And we are going to open and we're going to... Actually, how do you attach it in? I know there's a way you can do that. Oh yeah, it's just the merge button. So what we're going to do then is we are going to grab the... What did I call it? The pad builder. We're going to merge that in here. Apparently we can't. Okay, we'll build it from scratch then. The game uh, appears to be not allowing inputs right now. Can we clear input locks? Yeah, there we go. With input locks cleared, it's now working again. Fantastic. So let's just go ahead and give this a remote guidance unit. And then we're going to need a little bit of cargo here. Not a ton. Uh, this is not, in fact, helpful. We're going to need a little bit of cargo here. Maybe, like, this might actually be enough. Then I'm going to attach this onto here. And we're going to then unpack this arm. And we're just going to see how much we can fit in this. The answer is quite a bit. That's too much. I'm not shocked by this, of course. We can, however, fit these bits into it. That's too much. Okay. And is this also too much? Wait, does that actually not go in there? I don't know. We'll find out. At any rate, we'll put another container module in here. That's already instantly too much. Okay, so we're going to need the tw size 24. Okay. Or it has other parts attached. Huh? So it does. Okay. That can probably fit into this container module, right? No, it, it can't quite. Okay. That's fine. We will go ahead and put this in here. And this one does not seem to go in. Okay, so we'll just mount that there and we'll just disassemble it manually. That actually requires another container module. Okay, that's fine. There we go. And then we can fill this up with grip pads since I'm pretty sure we're going to need a few more of them. So we'll bring this in something like this, and then we'll put in one more cargo storage unit worth of grip pads. Do we want some grip strips as well? Um, actually those might be handy. I'm going to bring in grip strips for the edges instead of grip pads, and maybe the center as well. We can fit a whole lot more of those in. Yeah, I like it. So we're going to bring in something along the lines of this nonsense. I don't think we can fit another one, right? Yeah, okay. And then I'll also bring in a container full of grip pads. Just to be on the safe side. So something along the lines of this... We can fit how many? Six? Six. Okay. Can we fit any in here? Yes, we can fit two. Fantastic. Okay, so... Hmm. Can you fit in here? Not quite. You can maybe fit into one of these, though. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so this is what we need to land. Sure. Now, we're going to need probably a gyroscope of some sort on this. And I'll just put in this little guy. Fantastic. We're going to need some amount of fuel. Probably not very much to land this. I'm going to do like an X-16 fuel tank, I think. And then just a little poodle on there. 
That should be more than sufficient to land on Minmus. Technically, this is sufficient to land on Kerbin. Way sufficient to land on Minmus. And this is like 2,000 Delta V over Minmus. Fantastic. So this should be fine. Let's go ahead and put in some landing legs on there as well. So we're, of course, going to need like LT2s. Put a couple of those on. Excellent. There we go. And we will start those retracted. I suppose I could put them in an action group. I believe that's all I have to do. I, lit I literally never do that. <laughs> okay. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then the question is, how are we going to get this to, Min to Minmus? We'll go ahead and do a TD25 decoupler here. And in theory, this should be just a super simple lift. Like, two X64s and a mainsail should probably do the trick, I would think. 1.45. A little light on the thrust to weight, actually. Lots of Delta V, though. The vacuum Delta V is basically the same. Actually, we want this to be Kerbin. There we go. It's showing us 1.57 thrust to weight, which is probably better. But overall, I think that this is probably good enough. I'm not going to save this as the landing platform proofer, but rather the mini builder. Fantastic. And let's go ahead and launch this. I'm not going to... Well... I was going to say I'm not going to bother with aerodynamics. We probably should, but I think as long as I'm careful, it'll be okay. This 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 flight may fail because uh, aerodynamics are exciting. <laughs> Let's find out, shall we? This is not a simulated flight. I'm taking a risk here. Let's see. Off we go. This this section is going fine, which of course is exactly what we expect. Hopefully, this rotation servo doesn't burn out on the way up. That would be awkward. But the slightly lower thrust to weight should help that, in theory. We're going to go ahead and start tipping over a little bit here. I'm going to have to be pretty careful with that, though. Because uh, we're going to have some slight issues here with the aerodynamics. There's no doubt about that one. I'm definitely already feeling the aerodynamics issues. I think I may just chill here for the time being. Ooh, we are definitely drifting off the marker here. I mean, that's not shocking. That is not shocking at all. This is about what I expected, in all honesty. Okay, I mean, the mainsail's gimbling is doing the trick for now. Yeah. I think we're okay. I like it. Let's go ahead and hold prograde at this point. And our apoapsis is getting up to space. That is fantastic. Let's go ahead and cut this. And we're just going to drift at this point. Yes, you can definitely get into orbit more efficiently than this. But it should be completely okay in theory. And we'll just have it be not quite there. I feel like that's overkill on the thrust to weight. Eh, close enough. Mostly only using this for timing. So let's just go ahead and move over towards that maneuver node. We are not moving the fastest, that's for sure. Well, we're going to head on over. And as soon as we're out of the atmosphere, then we'll have a better idea. We will physics warp here. And we are out of the atmosphere now. So we know that we need to burn this at T minus 33 seconds. It's okay. Hmm. 
Our DV is actually quite low here. With no power, either. <laughs> I'm a moron! Okay, well, like I said, I was taking a risk. So, we'll, we're will we going to revert that back just for the sake of time, but I'm going to deduct, looks like, what, 60k? Okay, so 100 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20... 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Okay, so I'm a moron. Um, this isn't new, of course. And we are just going to heavy lift this. Easy peasy. Okay. And of course, we're going to need some power on this, turns out. That helps. <laughs> It was never going to make it. Like, we probably could have made it with the Delta V to Minmus orbit, for sure. The landing would have been sketchy. There's no doubt about that. I maybe could have pulled off the landing. Maybe. But not without power. Can tell you that right now. So we'll put a pair of photovoltaic panels on here. There we go. And they will do just fine. This is not the angle that I'd like them to be at. Should probably also have a battery on here, even if it's just a relatively small one. The Z1K would be more than enough. Okay. So now our thrust to weight here should be plenty high. 1.18, 1.88. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and launch this. And this will go much, much better. Fantastic. I definitely underestimate the uh, the weight of those cargo containers every time. Okay. These have gimbling on them. They should be, in theory, relatively okay. I don't think I'm going to throttle up to full here. I think I'm going to be at, like, half throttle here. Yeah, that's 1.55 from launch. Oh, I didn't strut that. That's going to get spicy. Okay, so we pretty much got to go straight up. For sure. We definitely have to go straight up here. We cannot do a turn. Not until these are gone. Which is going to be about another 40 seconds. Well, we can just burn at the horizon after that, I suppose. Air will be pretty thin by the time these burn off. We're actually being stabilized quite a bit right now by air, air pressure, and I'm very okay with that. Very, very okay with that. That air pressure will start decreasing very quickly here. We have no horizontal speed, and that's something that we definitely need to consider. Three... Two, one, zero. Okay. We're safe ish. However, we currently need to head over to the uh, radial out node. No, radial in. Radial in. Okay. We're heading to the radial in node. Our apoapsis is way up there right now. And we're just going to cut that and drift for the time being. Yes, we will tumble. I'm aware of this. Okay, and then we'll push this out to be something like this. This is a uh, pretty incompetent day, it seems. <laughs> oh, well, that happens. Okay, so this is going to be... Well, what is the actual burn time here going to be? I mean, we're going to burn basically this entire tank off on this, and that's okay. That's fine. I don't mind that. Okay, one minute, one second. So T minus 30 seconds, approximately. We'll go ahead and warp towards that a little bit. We're going basically straight up right now, and I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. But, I mean, I forgot struts, so what am I going to do? We're now aligned for this. We should definitely remember to extend our solar panels. There we go. 
And we'll burn this right about now. Gotta get that horizontal speed going. Yep, this is going to be a pretty lengthy burn. In fact, I'm going to physics warp it. Excellent. We're getting that sweet, sweet horizontal speed going. We're going to stop physics warping now. And we're going to save as much DV as possible here. Good enough. Okay, we're going to burn off the remaining delta V. Actually, do we even need an inclination change? Let's check that. I'm not 100% certain that we do need an inclination change right now. Yeah, our inclination is pretty far off, but what would this actually end up looking like if we were to just burn this as is? Hmm. Yeah, that's quite far off. No doubt about that. Okay. Inclination change it is. <laughs> Fantastic. So we're going to, of course, need this to be anti-normal, and we'll just go ahead and start turning over towards anti-normal. And that's going to be about 330 meters per second. Oof. A little bit gross, but it should be okay. We'll need to burn this at T minus six and a half seconds. Let's physics warp this turn. Rather, five and a half seconds. Okay, let's go ahead and burn this now. Technically, we should be on the maneuver node. And off we go. Probably overshot that a bit, right? Yeah, close enough. Okay, so Minmus is probably about the time we hit the descending node here we want to burn. Sometime around there. Yeah, that's looking good. Technically, if we burned a little bit earlier, we would be able to get an encounter slightly more efficiently, I think. Uh, let's take a look here. No, it's a little later. We want to burn slightly later here. No, I don't want that radial portion in there. Okay. Let's go ahead and move this guy on over like that. That looks good. We'll go ahead and set up for that maneuver. What is this going to look like? Good enough. Plenty good, in fact. And we'll have enough DV to make this happen. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and warp to that maneuver. And we will burn this at T minus... What would that be? 26 and a half seconds? No. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? 29 seconds is when we'd want to burn this. So T minus 29 seconds, we will go ahead and warp towards that, and we will burn this now. So off we go to Minmus. This will be plenty of Delta V to get us stopped and to get us actually landed on Minmus. Be completely fine. So we will just get ourselves a few more seconds of burn here. I'm actually going to physics warp this burn. It's a bit of a lengthy one. There we go. And we are going to start the burn a little bit more carefully here. Okay, what's this looking like? We still need to burn this a little bit more here. That'll do. Actually, let's bring that in a little bit. That'll do. I like it. Once we arrive here, of course, we're going to want to do a minimal burn to put ourselves into orbit. Actually, we probably just want to circularize, in all honesty. Something like that. It's only 162 meters per second. That'll be fine. Let's go ahead and warp towards that. Goodbye, Kerbin. Hello, Minmus. Perfect. Now, of course, this is not bringing in another engineer, and uh, that's okay. We can always bring in another engineer later if we need to. We'll go ahead and align ourselves for this retrograde burn. 
and that will be at T minus four and a half seconds. So let's go ahead and warp towards that. And we will burn this right about now. Excellent. Okay, how's that looking? Fine, that's looking just fine. So we will, of course, need to land over here where all these grip pads are. <laughs> but that is a job, I think, for the next episode. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And I'll see you all next time when, hopefully, I'm a little bit more competent. Because apparently this is not my day. <laughs>